Okay, 1-7. Composition of functions. An incredibly important topic in calculus. So you want to make sure that you can at least start dealing with these. We'll start with some simpler ones and we'll work our way along. Just so that you know some notations, some books like to write it this way. Again, those that had me for Algebra 2, we called that Fogg and Goff. Um, but I prefer to write it either this way or just like this. Okay, that's how I have always written it and have always seen it. They mean the same thing. I just think it, I know it looks weird, but I think it's easier to see what you're supposed to do if you look at it that way than if you look at it, say, in that manner. So just keep in mind that if you do see those other notations, that they mean the same thing as these. And we'll talk about what these are asking you to do in just a second. But they mean the same thing. And they can't have any letters there. It's just they, F and G are very popular. H is another one that's very popular to be used. Basically because those three letters can't possibly, even if you write them terribly, can't look like each other. Right? Uh, so here we have F of X and G of X. They are called functions. Obviously you see F of X is 2X minus 4. And G of X is 3X squared plus 1. Well, G of 2, that shouldn't be anything surprising. We did that. What, a week and a half ago? Right? It's basically saying find function g. Well, there it is. And this 2 is replacing the x. And that means I'm going to go through just function g. I don't care about function f right now because this problem is specifically saying look at g. And it's saying wherever you see an x, replace it with a 2. So g of 2 equals, so as you're going along, well, there's a 3 right there. So you just write a 3. There's an x, so you replace it with 2. But that 2 has to be squared plus 1. And once you replace it with whatever they tell you to replace it with, then you try and simplify it as best you can. And this happens to be one that we can simplify really well. Now, is this over here saying g times 2? No, that's saying g of 2. Big difference. So don't try and divide by that 2 when you get done. All right? It's g of 2. It's a notation. Okay? And so basically, if we're going to do this, we would do order, you know, word of operations, or PEMDAS. And so we would take the 2 and square it first, which is obviously 4. Take that times 3, which I hope is obviously 12, plus 1 is 13. I'm hoping I can skip some of those order of operation things because you know how to do those. Now, the reason I like to start with that one, and you might wonder, well, what's that have to do? Because that's really not a composition of functions. That's just substituting 2. Well, the reason I do that is because then I can show you all this is asking you to do is basically the same thing. It's saying, go find function g found it. Wherever there was an x, they now want me to replace it with f of x, which is a little bit more complicated. So here's actually what I would like you to do first when you do these. The g, just replace f of x with what it is. And in this problem, f of x happens to be 2x minus 4. Does everybody see that? That's what f of x is for this problem. So what they're really asking me to do, again, is to look at function g and every place I saw that x previously, I'm supposed to replace it now with 2x minus 4, which just happens to be f of x in this problem. Is everybody okay with that idea? I'm sorry. So we start writing. Here's a 3. Should I replace that? Well, no. And I'm just going to write this quick. Don't replace the 3. There's your x. Replace it. And in this problem, we were told to replace it with whatever f of x was, which again happens to be 2x minus 4. Well, what's the next thing along the way is square. So do I square the 3? Well, no, that's not what was squared before. It's whatever x was is what was squared. So actually, all of this right here has to get squared because that's what I replaced x with. Okay. And then how about this plus 1? Does that get replaced? No, you just write it down. That, you don't change that. That stays the same. And so really, if you look at it, all I did is wherever I saw an x here, I simply replaced it with 2x minus 4. Right? That, that's all I did. So once again, once we got to that step over here, I said we simplify it to the best of our ability. Is that simplified over there, or can we do more? Unfortunately, we can do more. And so over here, maybe on a scratch piece of paper, and I'll just do it over here. Again, the first thing you're going to do is those powers, and that means to take 2x minus 4 times itself. Or in other words, FOIL. Because right? what we're doing really right now is this to the second power. Well, so you take 2x times 2x. Well, that's 2 times 2 is definitely 4. And x times x is 
is x squared. And then you take 2 times the negative 4, which is a negative 8x. And that's how I look at it. Just distribute the 2x and then distribute the negative 4. It's really the same thing, but negative 8x and positive 16. A lot of people always mess up. They do all this good work, and they mess up that last one all the time. And I know that's kind of low. I'll write it a little higher here. So we've got 4x squared. We have a negative 8x and a negative 8x. How come that didn't cancel? Hasn't that been happening a lot, that stuff canceling lately? Well, how come that one didn't cancel? Same sign, right? Minus 4, minus 4. If they were minus and then plus, they would have, right? But it's not, and then so then plus 16. Is everybody okay with that? Everybody see where that came from? Now, this is where that one college professor might said, hey, we're done. That's awesome. It's 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. He kind of lost where he was in the problems, like legitimately, uh, not just making fun. Um, I'll explain why that is when the mic's not on. I'm just going to replace that, correct? That's what I just found. It, it's 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. So if we go back over here, and I probably should switch back to green, equals 3, replace that with what it is. It's 4x squared, and I didn't leave enough room, minus 16x plus 16. And then let's not forget, it would be very easy to do it, plus 1. Because you're doing all this hard work, it would be very easy to forget that plus 1. I know it seems like a pain, but the better you, the quicker, you'll get a lot better at this a lot faster. So we've got g of 2x minus 4. Well, now what? Obviously, I wrote it again so we can do more. Yeah. Yep, we got to distribute there, right? So what is that? 12x squared? Anybody know that off the top of your head? Yep, and it's negative, right? You get 48x. Well, if you didn't know it before, now you do. Can I just go 49 right away? Now, how come I'm not taking the 3 times the 1, then? Because it's not in those parentheses, right? So is it okay not just to go 49? Because if I just write 49, I'm done. Now, some of you are saying, oh, we got a key number factor that we got to... No. I didn't say find zeros. I didn't say find factors. I said find g of f of x. Is that what we have found? Yes, it's right here. This right there is, and you don't necessarily, I'm not too concerned if you write this last step. It's right there. At this point, I'm more concerned that you can actually get to it. And again, really, this first step, I think, really lays it out for you. If they want you to replace it, they're going to tell you what to replace it with. And if you can get a grasp around that, this really isn't that hard. It's saying, please replace that x with maybe a 2, like in letter A, or a 2x minus 4, like in letter B. Okay. Questions? Okay. So this one, here's that fog. I just wanted to do one so that when you saw the notation, you could understand it. Remember, that really means f of g of x. You notice how the order stays the same. It goes f, then g, then x. See, left to right, it still goes in the same order. And so what this one is really saying is find function f and replace it with whatever g of x is, correct? Do we know what g of x is? Well, we have to find function f. Well, I found that. And I have to replace it with whatever g of x happens to be, which is right there. G of x and 3x squared plus 1 are seen as the same thing here. All right? So I have to find that. Okay. And in order to find that, I have to go to f of x, and wherever I saw an x previously, I'm going to replace it with 3x squared plus 1. Everybody understand why I put 3x squared plus 1 there? Okay. So to find that equals... Also, you agree I've basically replaced x in that one right there, right? So you start writing. There's the equal sign. Here's a 2. There's an x. So replace it. 3x squared plus 1, right? There's an x right there, so replace it. And then minus 4. Is this one going to be as hard as the last one? No, how come not? I don't have to foil anything. There's still a square in the problem, though. How do you know I don't have to foil anything? Because the squaring's not on the parentheses, right? These are way better. These aren't as hard. So why don't you try and finish up cleaning that one up a little bit on your own.
All right, let's see how you did there. So f of 3x squared plus 1 equals. Yeah, somebody just said you got to distribute this 2 here. And so if we do that, we get 6x squared plus 2. Do I distribute the 2 to the negative 4? No, it's not in those parentheses, so don't do that. So you just kind of leave that minus 4 out there, right? And so really at this point, if you wanted to, you could say, all right, this is f. This is really g of x equals, well, 6x squared minus 2. Again, did I say factor here? Did I say find zeros? Did I say, no, I didn't. I wanted you to find basically a function inside another function. And that's what you've done. That's what it is simplified. And so you're done. Okay. There's no need to do that unless you're asked to do that, which you're not. Okay. This one's weird. F of f of x. Can they do that? Yeah, they're asking you to take f of x and put it inside itself. You can do that. It's weird, but you can do that. And so if you follow the rules that I have kind of set, it says, okay, this one kind of tells you which one to go find. All right, I found it. It's right there. This one is telling you what to replace. So here's the f right there, right? And now here we're going to put what that really stands for in this problem. Well, what does f of x really stand for in this problem? 2x minus 4, right? That's what it said. Now, obviously, every problem is going to be a little bit different. But here, it stands for 2x minus 4. Okay? It is possible to put a function inside itself. Okay? Everybody okay with how I did that? So down here, we're going to write that down. And so everywhere there was an x, I'm going to replace it with 2x minus 4. Okay? Here's your equal side. There's a 2. Leave it. There's an x right here. Replace it with, in this time, 2x minus 4. And then there's a minus 4, so minus 4. Okay. Again, should I really be doing any worrying about this left side here? No, don't worry about it. Just leave it. That's just notation. Unless you want to take it back to what it said in the beginning. That's up to you. But then we can distribute this. What is that? 4x minus 8 minus 4, right? is 4x minus 12. Anybody want to take a, a guess as another way you can write this notation, how you can write f of f of x? Okay, fuck, yeah, not what I was looking for, but uh, it is sometimes, it is acceptable sometimes to look at it this way. Because isn't it inside itself, you know, that's another way that you can look at that notation. Uh, I don't think you'll ever see it that way in here, but if you see it again some other way, you kind of know what they're talking about then. Okay? Maybe a math meet or something, you never know. Okay, so that was kind of a weird one. Well, what we've done here is I've showed you that H is a possibility. And what's a little different about this one, this very first one, A? It's saying F of H of 2. Now, basically what we're going to do here is let's go do letter B first. Because okay? I want you to try and work on one of these, all right? Uh, and I'm going to give you some time. Try letter B. Might take some work here because I do see I'm putting this H of X in there, which means I'm going to have to square it. With what means you might have to foil that. So take some time here and try this one on your own, and then we'll come back together. All right, so as I walked around, it was looking pretty good. There is a reason I made you do letter B first. So let's have everybody focus back up here. We'll just do it quick. f of x plus 7, right? That's what it's saying? Because that's what h of x is. Right? So go find f. Well, there it is, over there. Right? So wherever I saw an x, I've got to put x plus 7. So there's a 2. There's an x. And there's a plus 3. Right? Do you mind if I just speed things along and take care of it for you? So if you FOIL x plus 7, you should get x squared plus 14x plus 49. Okay. And so we clean it up. 2x squared plus 28x plus, well, eventually, one. is everybody okay with me just putting 101? Is that all right? Okay. Because, yeah, you get 98 and you add the 3. 
So they, that's right. That's all we got to do. It doesn't say factor. It doesn't say, it just says find f of h of x. And that's what we did because this really is h of x, right? Now, the reason I wanted you to do that one first is to find this problem. Do you agree that this almost says the exact same thing as that? Except a, x had been replaced with a... So one way you could do this type of problem is to find all of this first and then substitute 2 in for x, right down here. You could substitute 2 there, substitute 2 there, and you'd be done. That is an enormous waste of your time. Okay. If you're asked to do letter B, well, that's fine. Go ahead and do all that work. If you're asked to do this, kind of forget the F is there for a second. Work inside out. Is H of 2 something you know how to calculate? Yeah, we've been doing it for a week, right? So you basically put 2 in there, and you put 2 in there, and so what's H of 2? So now we know that this can get replaced with 9. Right? That's what H of 2 is. So you replace h of 2 with what it equals, and now f of 9, is that something we can solve for? Yeah, most definitely. That basically means, and i got so many arrows up here, i probably got to get rid of some. That basically means take 9 and put it in there, and also put it in there. So we've got f of 9 is 2, 9 squared plus 3, right? So f of h of 2, if you wanted to go back to how we started, is whatever that number ends up being. Well, you take 9 squared. This gets kind of big. 9 squared is, obviously, 81 times 2 is 162. Add 3 is 165. So I hope you agree that this particular method that we did here is a lot quicker than doing all of this just to turn around and substitute in 2. Right? Would you get the same answer? Yes, as long as you did both of them right. Okay. Any questions? So why don't you try those last two real quick, if you haven't done so already. And we'll make sure that you've got this idea figured out. And then we will let you work. OK, once again, as I went around, it looked pretty good. Uh, your attention back here. The key is you really have to watch as to which function I am referring you to depending on the problem. These are both referring to h. And so I, when you have these, I would start inside, work your way out. And so, yeah, this h we'll just kind of write down here. But let's go figure out what h of 3 is. Well, that means put a 3 there and there. So h of 3 is just 10. So now, basically, you turn right around, go right back to h, and put in 10 in both locations. And that'll tell you h of 10. And I think I saw a lot of people get that this was 17. Okay. So f of negative 5. So h is down here. Let's find out what f of negative 5 is. So take negative 5 and basically put it right there and right there. So negative 5, you have to square. Now be careful. Watch those calculators. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. But you then take times 2, 50, add 3 is 53. Now you have to take 53, put it into h. So we're going to put it right there and there. And it is... 16. <laughs> Any questions?